in this video I'm going to share with you seven navigation techniques that are 100% accurate, 100% reliable, 100% of the time. And in this video I'm going to suggest that everything he says is absolute claptrap and twaddle and should not be relied upon. The science and technology that goes into surveying and producing maps nowadays is outstanding which means that you always get amazingly detailed, accurate maps. So you should always rely on your map. Whilst there is certainly a lot of science and technology goes into surveying and producing maps nowadays, that does not translate to meaning that the map you have in your hand is 100% accurate there are all sorts of things that can change and factors to take into account that might mean that there's something has happened between the map being surveyed and produced and you purchasing it and you being out on the ground using it your map is not necessarily 100 accurate compasses are an amazing piece of kit finely engineered delicately balanced this means that as long as you are using it correctly you can completely and utterly trust what this compass is telling you. Always trust your compass. What a load of old rubbish. Yes, compasses are brilliant, but compasses can break. They can get damaged. They can develop faults. They can be affected by your surroundings. They're also heavily reliant upon the end user, people like you and I, inputting the information into them correctly and using them correctly. So whilst they're a great piece of kit, you should not always trust your compass. 60, 61, 62. There, I've just used the pacing method to accurately record the fact that I've just covered 100 meters. Pacing is an incredibly accurate method of being able to determine how far you've covered. If you know how far you've covered and you know where you were, then you now know where you are. Pacing, absolutely bang on, spot on method for navigating. No, 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 no. Pacing is susceptible to all sorts of factors that can affect the accuracy of it. The steepness of the ground, the ground itself, whether you're wearing crampons, how tired you are, how much weight you are carrying, whether you're walking with yourself or with other people. The other factor as well with pacing that really throws it off is the fact that you actually have to remember to start pacing and stop pacing and remember to record that. So there's just too many variables involved for my liking for pacing to be an accurate navigation technique. We're with you in just a second, I just need to stop my watch. Timing. Timing is an absolutely bummer's way of navigating. One second to me is the same as one second to you. Five minutes to me is the same as five minutes to you. If we can use timing to determine the amount of time that we've been walking, we can figure out how far we've walked and we can always figure out where we are in relation to that. So timing, absolutely 100% accurate because time is accurate from one person to another way of navigating. What a load of old waffle. Whilst it's certainly true that one second for me is the same as one second for you and five minutes for you is the same as five minutes for me, there are all sorts of variables involved in timing which means that it's not an accurate way of being able to navigate. Forgetting to start and stop your watch are two factors to take into account. Another really important factor is the fact that we move at different speed over different types of ground carrying different types of weight. Even in the same walk, we'll move at different speeds. Just to suggest that we're constantly able to walk at a constant speed and equate that to the amount of distance that we've covered is absolutely rubbish. Timing has got loads of problems and inaccuracies inherently within it as a navigation technique. Magnetic bearings. You've got to love a good magnetic bearing, right? Set it into your compass, pick something to walk on, walk to it, repeat, you'll get to your destination on time, every time. We all love a good mag bearing, right? What is this guy smoking? There are all sorts of problems with magnetic bearings. We've already spoken about the fact that your compass, which is what you need for a magnetic bearing, is really prone and open to errors and damage. So let's put that to one side. We've already covered that. 
applying a magnetic bearing from a grid bearing can often take some mental calculation and some mental arithmetic so that's a problem first of all you put garbage into the compass you're going to get garbage back out of it at the other end as well and if you're ever on your own and walking on a magnetic bearing it can be incredibly time consuming it can really slow you down and it can also force you to fixate if the visibility is poor on the compass itself where it can sometimes distract you from noticing other things around you particularly potentially from a safety perspective so magnetic bearings nah not for me open to all sorts of problems I've just got to a known spot on my route so I've give us a second just set my altimeter on my watch to the altitude that I am on on the ground altimeters absolutely wonderful it's technology it can't go wrong it tells me what height I am above mean sea level at any point in time meaning that I can relate that to the map and it gives me an absolutely bombers accurate way of being able to determine my altitude altimeters brilliant bit of kit whoa 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 slow it down mr altimeter altimeters have got all sorts of problems with them firstly they're a piece of technology that relies on a battery batteries can run out secondly they rely on you being able to accurately identify where you are and input that altitude into the watch if you incorrectly identify your location you're going to be putting garbage into the watch they also rely on you remembering to keep checking them and resetting them at known points and they're also heavily influenced by atmospheric conditions as well so if you take all of those variables into account using an altimeter to help you navigate not for me thank you throughout the course of today i've been relating the map to the ground that means as i'm moving along i'm looking around for things on the ground that i can absolutely positively identify i've been finding them on the map and that means as I've been going along, I've always been able to determine where I am by looking at what's on the ground and applying that to the map. Absolutely amazing, outstanding, foolproof navigation technique. He's at it again, isn't he? Relating to the map to the ground is all well and good in theory, but in practice, it's got all sorts of problems. If it's at night or in really reduced visibility, you can't see any of the ground to relate it to the map it also means that you've got to have an incredibly good understanding of contour lines relief conventional signs what they actually look like and mean in real life and be able to apply them to the map it also means to be quite honest that you're constantly looking around and you've got your head in the map rather than enjoying your walk because you're constantly trying to relate the two together so for me relating the map to the ground it's a big no-no for those of you that haven't guessed already mr negative is actually it's me ta-da surprise i don't actually think mr negative is probably the fairest name for the, the character that i've played in this video i think mr realistic is a more accurate moniker everything that i said during that video everything that i pulled apart in terms of the other craig's navigation techniques were all completely true were all completely accurate every every loophole i found every inaccuracy that i mentioned every flaw is is true i didn't make anything up for for artistic license or anything like that it's all absolutely true and that's the point that i want you to take away from this video every single navigation technique has some degree for some reason or other an inaccuracy or a flaw within it if you recognize that if you understand that if you understand that every single method has an inaccuracy what it should suggest to you is that you should never be using just one method and that's the point i want you to take away from today's video if every single method has an inaccuracy within it by using multiple methods by layering them together you are diluting for want of a better phrase the inaccuracies in each of them if you only use pacing we've discovered what the problems with that are if you only use timing we've discovered what the problems with that are if you only relate the map to the ground we've discovered what the problems with that are 
if you bring those three techniques together or multiple techniques doesn't have to be those three you have started to adopt something of a safety net for any of the the inaccuracies that each of them individually contain you've adopted a, a belt I like the first a belt and braces approach um, is, is what you've taken by adopting multiple techniques together so just think from this point on never just use one navigation technique because it will have an inherent problem within it I can guarantee it never just use one use multiple the more that you can use the better but equally you don't want to be tying yourself up in knots and I think only experience will teach you which navigation techniques to use together in which situations and which circumstances I'm not going to offer a prescriptive list um, because I don't think there is one so moving forward whenever you're out navigating whichever navigation technique immediately springs to mind good it's probably sprung to mind for the right reason it's probably the right technique to use but not in isolation always double up treble up quadruple up if need be with other techniques to iron out those inaccuracies to to um, to dilute the errors that they naturally contain within them during this I've used the, the phrase navigation techniques many 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 times if you're not already familiar with the huge and growing navigation checklist that I've got I'm going to display that up on screen now head over there I think there's been the region of 50 plus videos and growing all around different navigation techniques and considerations so do please check that out take care and I'll see you in the next video cheers